Glory to God. We want to treat another topic again. So we have been talking about marriage now. We are going into this topic that says divorce is costly. That's lesson 37. Divorce is costly. Prayer, Almighty Father, we pull down every forces behind marriage breakups in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every forces working against home, hindering home to stand well, hindering home to be successful by the power in the name of Jesus Christ. We break them down in the name of Jesus Christ. We destroy them in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Our memory verse is taken from the book of Malachi chapter 2, verse 15. Malachi 2, verse 15. And it says, And did not he make one? Yet had he the residue of the Spirit, and wherefore one, that he might seek a godly seed, Therefore take heed to your spirit, and let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. Let's be very careful. This is the word of God. God created husband and wife, that is a man and a woman. Just one. He made them one. He made them one, not two. One. Then how we deal with one another he is very important to God. He is very important. Let's deal with one another or each other peacefully. Peacefully. Because we should not be, we should not do evil to one another. That same Bible is our Bible text. That's Malachi chapter 2, 13 to 16. Malachi chapter 2, 13 to 16. And it says, And this have you done again, covering the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping, and with crying out, in so much that he regarded not the offering any more, or received it with good with with good will at your hand. Yet ye say, Wherefore, because the Lord had been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dead treacherously, yet is she thy companion and the wife of thy covenant? And did, did not he make one? Yet had he the residue of the spirit, and wherefore one, that he might seek a godly seed. Therefore take heed to your spirit, and let none be treacherously against the wife of his youth. For the Lord, the God of Israel, said that he hated putting away, for one covereth violence with his garment, says the Lord of hosts. Therefore, take heed to your spirit, that ye do not treacherously. Hmm. Let's be very careful. The way we relate one another, because the way we behave to one another, what you do to your spouse matters to God. Please, let's maintain peace in our homes. Let's maintain peace in our marriages so that our marriages can work, so that our homes will experience heaven on earth. Let's say the introduction. Anyone considering divorce must have experienced months or years of trouble with their spouse. Yes, when you hear people say, No, I can no longer live with this man, I can no longer live with this man, meaning that they have. Uh, experience months or years of struggling. They are familiar with emotional distance, insecurity, fear, depression, anger, and perhaps betrayal. Life has become so difficult that divorce seems like the only path towards peace and happiness. A high priest emphasizes with believers in such state in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15. Hebrew 4 verse 15, the Bible says that even our high priest, not that he does not feel what we are feeling, he was once tempted, but he was without sin. However, God clearly explains his reasons for esteeming marriage so highly 
He says it was he who made them one, according to our Bible, our memory verse. Marriage is not a contract, it is a covenant. Yes, that is why God hates divorce and the consequences can be grievous. Yes, the consequences can be so grievous. That is why we must do everything to make sure that our marriages work. We should not see our marriage as contracts. Our marriages, they are covenant. Marriage is a covenant. And we must address it that way. We must work it out that way. Because it's, it's, it's a platform that God wants to use to raise Godly seed, to raise his children, to raise his heritage. That is why we must do everything to make sure that our homes are working. God hates divorce. Lesson number one, God hates divorce. Marriage symbolizes the covenant which God has with his people. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Marriage is a symbol that, that, that is the symbol of the covenant that God made with his people. God wants his children to understand that the marriage covenant is a very serious covenant. Yes, God wants his children to understand that the marriage covenant is a very serious covenant. That is why we encourage people the singles that don't go into marriage just because you are of age, because uh, uh, you, you must not be desperate, or because people are pushing you, or because of peer pressure, or family pressure. No! You have to seek the face of God, because marriage is a covenant, and we must take the covenant serious. That is God's covenant. It's God that established that covenant. Any attempt by a spouse to break the marriage covenant is a deliberate attempt to mind or make mockery of God's concept of covenant relationship. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 2, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. This is God talking to us, that he he is, a, he is a jealous God. Because he's a jealous God, that is why we must not break his covenant. Because when we are trying to break the marriage covenant, we are trying to mock God. We are trying to, 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 to say that the covenant that he has put down for us he, he is not right. I can do it in my own way. No, we must not do that. God did not have, intend marriage to be part to be bad, God did not intend divorce. God did not intend divorce to be part of the marriage experience. And it grieves him when we harden our hearts and break a covenant that he created. Yes, God did not intend divorce to be part of our marriages. But when we are now trying to harden our heart that we don't want to forgive whatever the, the husband is doing, or whatever the wife is doing, we don't want to forgive, we don't want to forget, we don't want to come together and talk things out. We are trying to do what? To break the heart of God. And it will grieve him. It will grieve the heart of God. And we will now make it a thing as if our God is not faithful. One major purpose why God established marriage is to produce godly offsprings. Yes, God established marriage to bring up his seed, to bring up God-fearing children. That is what we have according to Malachi chapter 2 verse 15. That is our memory verse. It is God's idea. Marriage is his idea. And he established this soul to bring up his children. God's designs, God's design for the family was that one man and one woman commit to themselves to each other for life and real children that we understand the concept of covenant as well. Yes, God's design for the family was that one man and one woman 
commit themselves to each other for life and real children that we understand the concept of the covenant as well. Yes, this God established home that, 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 that is having one man, one woman, and this home will bring up godly children that will understand that covenant that this covenant is just one man and one woman. And the children too will follow suit. The children too will obey. The, another point is that there is a far greater likelihood of having a successful marriage for children reared in a healthy two-parent home. Yes. With children that are real or that are being brought up in this home that is one man and one woman that is coming together, living together. Children that are real in this home, at the end of the day, these children will even be successful as well in their marriages. They will be successful in all that they do. That is why we must do everything to make sure that our homes are working. Our marriages are working. We come back to the, to the class activities. I let me quickly read it out. The word says the class should discuss the impact of divorce on marriages, homes, and children and society at large. Yes, the impact when there is divorce, when the home is not working. Hey, what are those negative impact that the divorce is having upon marriages, homes, and children, even on the, in the society as well? Lesson up to say divorce has grave consequences. Yes, the consequences of divorce is very hard. It is very great. That is why we must do everything not to be not to even consider it as an option to, to go into. No, talk things out. Now we want to look at it that that we get there is a direct correlation between the way a man treats his wife and the effectiveness of his prayers. Yes, when a husband is not treating his wife well, when a husband refuses to love his wife, there is correlation between the way the wife is being treated and the prayer and the effectiveness of his prayer, of the husband's prayer. That is why the Bible says the prayer can be healed. God does not listen to the pleas for blessing from those who have broken the covenant of marriage. Any marriage that the covenant is being broken, God will not listen to the pleading for blessing. God will not listen to the prayer to, to, to receive blessing from him. In 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 7, it says, Likewise ye husband, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. Giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being held together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Yes, you don't want your prayers to be hindered as a husband. What will you do? You take care of your wife. You love your wife. You honor her. You treat her as a weaker vessel. Weaker vessel in the sense that take care of her. As in value your wife. Be deliberate about it. Don't treat her like a trash. No, your wife is not a trash. Don't treat her like a uh, wooden material. The way we take care of, of uh, all, all these valuable things, something that if it should drop out of our hand carelessly, that thing will be broken. Uh, but the way we will hold that thing uh, carefully, so we are to treat the wife as a husband. The same thing with uh, with uh, wives. Because our husbands, they are our king. We treat them like kings. Yes, our husband is a king. We treat them. They are the crown of our head. We treat them like kings. Don't treat your husband like a, like a servant. Your husband, my husband, our husbands, they are not servants at all. No, they are not beggars. We treat them like kings. Hallelujah. Another thing is that now, I want to explain seven consequences of divorce. Seven, seven points, that is some points 
that, 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 that are consequences of divorce. That is when we involve in it, when we consider uh, divorce as an option, <laughs> there are consequences that one will face. Say, number one, divorce is a debt of, of a union. Yes, that union will be, will be dead for, for life. Because coming together might not really be uh, that easy. And therefore, the debt of a dream, say, debt of a dream, is a debt of a promise. And it's a debt of a family unit. Everyone involved in it, even a perpetrator, we feel grief and loss during a divorce. Yes, if there is someone that is uh, talking to you negatively or influencing you to, to, to separate from your husband or separate from your wife, by the time the separation will take place, by the time the divorce will take place, even that fellow will feel the grief. If there are children involved, they will experience severe grief over the loss of being with both parents together and living under the same uh, roof. Another point is that divorce marks a pivotal moment in a person's life, especially for children. Life as they know, is it changes forever and they become different versions of themselves, adopting to new routines and new versions of their parents who have also changed. Yes, children, we see children, children raised in a divorce home. They, 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 their life is not really, it's not so balanced. That is why we encourage parents, let's live together as husband and wife. Let's talk things out. Let's talk issues out. We should not be living like a cat and dog in our homes. There must be forgiveness always. We must learn to forgive one another so that the home will be conducive for our children. Children of divorce. Parents are more likely to experience poverty, educational failure, early and risky sexual activities, non-marital childbirth, early marriage, cohabitation, marital discord, and divorce. Yes, children from a divorce home, <laughs> there is tendency for them too to experience divorce. There is tendency for them to involve in sexual risk, in short, uh, risk. You will see them, their life will be, educationally, their life will not be balanced. They will not, they will not be focused. We see children that used to be very intelligent in their classes, they will be drawing back. And then teachers, what is wrong with you? Especially home that are having crisis. When there is crisis in their home, it shows in the children. That is why we encourage parents, please, let's try, have this habit of forgiving. In short, this forgiving is it's a paramount thing that we must practice in our marriage. That's why we must learn to say, I am sorry. If you are the one that can do it, please, if you have the grace to do it, do it. Say it. It does not reduce you. It will even add to your value. Hallelujah. Following a divorce, parents and children often experience emotional and psychological problems that can last for years, even for the rest of their lives. Anxiety, depression, low self-esteem, fear of abandonment, distrust, insecurity, lack of intimacy, confusion over sex, sexual or gender, guilt, faithlessness, loneliness, bitterness, and rebellion manifest themselves in children who have lived through the divorce of their parents. In short, Look at all those things. Just look at them. That children, that their parents have divorced. Look at what they will experience. That is why parents, please, let when we are, when there is crisis in our, we should consider our children. We should always look back and look at the children that we have given birth to what will happen to them. That is why, even apart from the children, even as a wife, as a husband, you will not be the same again. No, you will not be the same again. That is why divorce is not an option. Divorce matters. Divorce matters can lead to a poor sense of judgment, especially on marital issues. Increase in crime, drug or alcohol addiction, even suicide attempts. Yes, people that are involved in divorce, 
they, they don't treat marital issue well. They, 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 if it is a, a, a wife, not a woman, you will hear them saying that uh, men, they will generalize things that men are not good. And the, a man, you will hear a, a divorced man will be saying, ah, women, they are wicked. No, nobody is wicked. But the ability to manage their home is what they don't have. That is why we encourage Christians that we should try as much as possible to, 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 to digest in the word of God and be praying together. When we pray together, study the Bible together, it will help the whole. Because divorce can lead to suicide attempt. Yes. It also reduces the productivity of the divorcee or divorced man in their place of work and even in serving God. It reduces productivity because the person will not be able to reason well. The person will not be able to think well. That is why we must be very careful. There is a chance of another divorce. Research shows that about 60% of divorcee or divorced men who marry will divorce again. Why? Because the issues that happened even in the first marriage can also reoccur in the second marriage. Yes, that unresolved issues that made them to separate from their first marriage can also happen again. And, the, 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 and divorce again will reoccur. That is why when you are saying you, are, you want to leave your husband, you want to leave your wife, oh, this man is this, this woman is this, you have to consider it very well. <laughs> because you, you, you may leave and maybe another, another man is eyeing you outside there and beckoning on you, come, I will take care of you. And another woman is eyeing you outside there, then beckoning on you, come, I will take care of you. But there is a character in you that makes you the, that, that you were not comfortable with the, with the wife of your youth, with the husband of your youth. And you are carrying that same character to enter another marriage. It will not work. It will not work. That is why we encourage us. Change is what is constant in a man. Let's change. When I mean a man, I mean in human being. Husband, change. Wife, change. Let's change. It's very important because when we change from bad to good, our marriages, they will be in short, our homes will be sweet. Our homes will experience heaven on earth. We pray that God will give us the grace to work on our marriages in the name of Jesus Christ. God hates divorce because it carries grave consequences. Yes, God hates it. God does not like divorce. The Bible says he hates putting away. Because of that, we must not involve in it. If God hates divorce, believers should do everything possible, including consulting with the author of marriage, God, to make the marriage work. Yes. Everything we do in our homes, we must involve God. That is why we should establish the altar of God in our homes. That where we can easily go to say, Father, this is what I am going through. Please see me through. Wives, if your husband, if you believe that what your husband is doing is not too okay, you are don't don't we should mind the way we correct our husband. We should be very careful the way we talk to our husbands. Because we are not the head. The husband is the head. Then go to the owner of his head because there is someone that is his head. That is God. Talk to God. Please change the heart of my husband. Please work on my husband. As well as the wife. Husbands, when you are correcting your wife, don't use abusive words. Don't speak about her weaknesses. Please, let's learn to pray. We should learn to take matters to God. The one who hates putting away so that he will amend our homes. So that he will uphold our homes because he is the pillar that our homes are leaning on. Let's go to him and he will help our homes in the name of Jesus Christ. Second class activity says, according to Malachi chapter 2, 13 to 14, what happened to the offspring made to God by men who did treasure, treasurously with their wife? When you are dealing with your wife treasurously, what will happen to the children in that home? Prayer, Almighty God, please help couples to remain faithful to the covenant of marriage forever and pass this godly character to their children.
children until you come in the name of Jesus Christ. Help us, O oh God. Help us to remain faithful to the covenant, O oh God, of our marriages forever. And help us to pass the, the, the baptism to our children, the, the mantle to our children in double portion, O oh God, so that our children's homes as well will walk until you come in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Let this blessing bless life, so God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let it bless home, our Father. Glory be unto your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Oh,